But in order for a broker to help you succeed in building your own business, which this is what it is, like you may work for a company, but you are building your own business, you're a business owner. If you don't have the checklist to help you be able to scale, to get five clients at a time, 10 clients at a time, 20 clients at a time, you need the checklist, you need the, the, the systems, the process to be able to replicate this over and over to, have, to increase your volume. Welcome back to another episode of The Agent Goldmine, where I'm covering the entire buyer checklist from very beginning to the very end. And I'm sad today because I am not joined by Shelby. Today is a solo episode because Shelby is stranded at an airport. So it's just me, baby. I have gotten a, uh, quite a few messages from you guys saying that you are appreciating these checklists and that you are watching this on YouTube. So I'm so, so excited. Thank you for doing that. I will be sharing my screen again. And for those that want a copy of these checklists, message me. The best way to do that is to text the word checklist to 520-341-2552. And I'll say that again in case you don't know how to rewind. <laughs> it's te text the word checklist. By the way, that's one word. <laughs> checklist to 520-341-2552. And we can schedule a call and I can get you those checklists. So again, this is the buyer series. Shelby's going to be doing the seller series later on. So stay tuned for that, of course. And as always, if this has been valuable, please give us a review because we do read every single one of the reviews and we do base our future episodes based off of the type of reviews that we're getting. So if people are want more of XYZ or, you know, a different topic, we want to hear that. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Welcome to the Agent Goldmine, the only podcast in the world specifically for real estate agents who are stuck at five transactions a year to help them get to 20 plus. Your hosts, Ali Garced and Shelby Johnson, two EXP icon agents, each do over 40 transactions a year and interview others who are crushing it. In this podcast, you'll receive the knowledge to help you scale your business using systems and processes with our interviews and monologues twice a week. If you want to be a part of our community, reach out. Welcome to the show. So the beginning of this all the way to the end is going to be what to do step by step as soon as the listing agent has told you that the sellers decided to accept your buyer's offer. So as promised, I'm going to share my screen right here. I'm going to be showing you on one side is my complete checklist step by step to what I give every single one of the agents that join our five pillars community that name me as a sponsor. And on the right side is going to be my email series because they go hand in hand and the checklist tells you when to send what email. So by the way, if your brokerage does not give you these checklists that, I mean, this is the foundation of the business. I feel like I'm also talking to a lot of people <laughs> before I get started. I'm talking to a lot of people that are like, my broker, it, you know, answers every single one of my questions. I just like don't have the checklist. And that is such a slow start. Like that's a bare minimum that your broker answers your questions. That's that should be a given. But in order for a broker to help you succeed in building your own business, which this is what it is, like you may work for a company, but you are building your own business, you're a business owner. If you don't have the checklist to help you be able to scale to get five clients at a time, 10 clients at a time, 20 clients at a time, you need the checklist, you need the, the, the systems, the process to be able to replicate this over and over to have to increase your volume. So if you don't have this, please reach out. <laughs> We're here to help. Okay. With that said, sharing my screen right now. So the first thing I'm currently sharing my screen, which shows the checklist. So as soon as you know that the buyer is now under contract because the sellers accepted your buyer's offer, the first thing I'm going to do is I send my buyer email number four, which is congratulations, we're under contract. Here are the next steps. So once again, I use superhuman, you don't have to use superhuman, but within a couple of strokes of the keyboard, like literally one second worth of keyboard typing, you can pull up the canned email that has everything of what you say to every single buyer. Again, this is a system. And then you can just send it to your buyers immediately. It's superhuman is 30 bucks a month. And it's well worth it. So from here, I'm now going to share my screen for on superhuman. And this is it. Buyer email number four, congrats, we're under contract. So first thing you see, of course, is my bomb bomb. 
bomb bomb i think at one point was free for a certain amount or i think it may be for a certain amount of videos i ended up paying for the extra bomb bomb service it's like 25 bucks a month and you can send as many videos as you want you can use this embed this to your email which is exactly what i've done so you have that animated feature of me like moving you can tell that it's not just a still shot it is a video so click to play and it usually will tell you how long the video is too once again, I have a video for every single one of my emails because my emails are lengthy. I'm only sending six uh, throughout the process, both on my buyer side and my seller side. So because they're lengthy and a lot of words and people don't want to read, especially when they're busy with moving or buying and selling, I have a video to help them do less thinking. You know, any way that I can make it easier for my buyers, that's what I end up doing and for the sellers too. So they play this video and this video, which I'm not gonna play now, it just covers everything of what is in this email. So I'm gonna go through this email first and then I'm gonna go back to my checklist. So this email says, congratulations on your accepted offer. Our team is now gonna open escrow with the title company to let them know we're under contract, which is also stated in my checklist as well for you know, me to know on my own terms. So your to-do list, this is, this is what I'm telling the, the buyers, your to-do list is, and I give them a number to-do list because they, we're a team, you know, we're working together. So I need your help. <laughs> number one is in case they haven't yet, this has been number one in all my past emails so far. Number one, add my transaction coordinator's email to your contacts. I don't want all the forms that they're about to send to go to your junk, your spam, et cetera. So I, this is not the first time that they've heard this. And I, at this point, we have already established a group chat or a WhatsApp chat or some sort of communication with me and both buyer parties or multiple if there are multiple. So they already know my TC's name, but just in case if they haven't, add them to your contacts. Number two, wire the earnest money deposit immediately. The last thing you want to do as a buyer's agent is to say, congratulations, we're under contract. And then like the buyer, the buyer doesn't know how important it is to wire that earnest money. And then you receive a cure notice or I mean, it's probably called something different in your state, but like a default, you know, like, hey, you're now in breach of the contract. Where is the earnest money? And then the seller cancel because <laughs> Who, who's going to be to blame? You are. Don't ever think that you are telling your clients to do too much or that there is over communication. There is no such thing as over communication. I have never met a single agent that was fired because they communicated too much. But on the contrary, people are fired all the time for not communicating enough. So I give my clients homework and they know it. So as I text them, I'm like, dude, congratulations. Or if I call them or FaceTime, whatever it is, I say, I'm, t I'm giving you your email, buyer email number four, be on the lookout for that. You have homework. And they're always like, okay, Allie, we have homework. All right. <laughs> so. Also, what this says is if you're going to be paying from a brokerage account, transfer the money immediately, you know, day three or whatever your state requires. In case you don't know, reach out to your broker. The third thing of their to-do list, which I have in my email, which is covered by my bomb bomb video in the beginning of this, at the top of this email is pay for inspections. Depending on what kind of vendors you use or the city, you know, just any, the way that your area does business. In Tucson, the vendors will go out and they will do the inspection before they have collected payment. However, they will not send the report until they've collected payment. So I always tell my clients if they have if they've chosen to use their own vendors, then they likely know, already know how to pay them. If they're using our preferred vendors or whichever one they choose from our list, then go ahead. Here is their number. Reach out to them directly. Because the more that I can connect the two parties without me being the middleman, the better and the faster and the smoother it goes. So don't think that you have to be the middleman being like, okay, this is their, this is their phone number, text them. And, you know, especially if the vendor is a smaller vendor and doesn't have a process, you know, our vendors that we use, they have a link. So it's, it is easy to just send the link. Hey, here's a link to the payment. This is when your inspection is going to be. Again, my, a lot of my, my clients, majority are out of state, sometimes out of country. So they are not physically in the in the area. So just so you know, as I continue going about this, you'll realize, oh, like, why are why is she not meeting the buyer clients at the home inspection, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. That's why. Okay, so they pay for the inspections. I, of course, have already told them over the phone or in a previous email, I have already communicated to them how much each inspection is going to be. In the state of Arizona, 
agents need to be physically present whenever they open a door for the vendors because the vendors do not have super up access. So a, an agent needs to be there. So with that said, uh, we will already be there. So therefore, a lot of the buyers, they're usually at work, it really depends on the buyer, right? But I tell them already how much those inspections are going to be. So, you know, a general home inspection is going to cost around $700. Roof inspections are typically free. So it's a no brainer to get one. Termites are going to be about 75 bucks. But in my email, as you can see, where I'm sharing my screen, I say it's about $100. I would rather overestimate, estimate, estimate <laughs> than under. So the last thing I want to hear is, hey, Ali, you said that the termite inspections were 75 bucks. And because I can't control these third parties with inflation, <laughs> they're at some point going to be increasing their prices. So I'd rather name a higher price than a lower one. And of course, uh, plumbing inspection, the add on for the sewer scope is going to be around 200 to 250. And then of course, they have already chosen the inspections that they want to do. Sometimes once they hear they're under contract, uh, they'll add on more inspections because shit just got real, you know, like, oh my gosh, we are now under contract. Actually, I do want an HVAC inspection. Okay, so I have already spoken to them about what inspections that they might that they might want to order, but things sometimes change once they're under contract. So I go over it with them again. Are you good with just having the general and the term? I just want to make sure, or do you also want to add on electric, HVAC, roof, plumbing, etc.? Sometimes they'll say yes. Yeah. Sometimes they'll say no. Sometimes they'll say a mixture. So at that point, what I do is I have a WhatsApp. I tell my TC because my TC is the one that schedules all of it. Once again, I'm not living in Tucson, but I'm selling homes in Tucson. And just yesterday, I saw that I'm the number eighth leading producing agent in all of EXP for Tucson. And I haven't lived there in six months. So you can do this from afar. <laughs> Therefore, what I do is I pay one of my agents to sit in during the inspection and give me the debrief. And I have my TC schedule the inspections. And I have her schedule it for ASAP because I have a good crew that can go out on the fly. And if it doesn't work for one person, it works for another. So it's great to have those partners. And they don't even have to be you know, in your community. You can ask around. Always, always, always ask your broker to make sure that you can do that. So that's the, the buyer's third piece of homework, <laughs> pay for the inspections. Number four is talk to your lender and talk about when you want to schedule the appraisal. Each, this is going to be different depending on each buyer. Some buyers are going to want to close in 30 days, they're paying cash, et cetera. So therefore, they may not even have the appraisal. But sometimes if they want a faster close or if they need a faster close, they're going to need to remain in constant contact, even more so with their lender. And of course, you as the buyer's agent should know. You should be in a group chat with the buyers and the lender. So in that way, as soon as the inspections come and they're they're good to go and the buyers want to want to proceed, immediately that day, you can you and the buyers can tell the lender, go ahead and order the appraisal because we will be going through with this property. If the timeline is pushed up and they want to close within 30 days, but it's financed and et cetera, sometimes as soon as they realize that they are under contract, they may want to schedule the appraisal then. So again, that's why communication, I start a group chat with both buyer parties or all buyer parties and the lender. We're in a group chat. I pin it to the top of my iPhone list in my thread. So in that way, the first nine conversations are all of my nine you know, closings or escrows that I have. Either way, you just have to make sure that you have communicated, preferably in writing, to your clients about the risk of paying for the appraisal as soon as you go under contract. Because should the inspections come back and they're bad and the buyers do not want to proceed and there's nothing that the seller can do to continue with this escrow, then at that point, they may forfeit the the price of the appraiser to go out there. So all of your buyers should know, you know, when when do they want to say yes to the appraisal? Do they want to wait until after inspection or do they want to order it right away? That's number four. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali said, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 
399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Point number five as part of their homework is once we have all the inspections back, do not fret. And I have this in all capital letters and I say this several times in my bomb bomb. All of the home inspection reports are going to be 60 to 70 pages long. So whether it's a brand new home or it was a home built in 1800, they're going to be 70 pages long and there's going to be a lot of red. So don't worry about it. I will tell you what's important and what's not, as well as a home inspector. They will also tell you what's important and what's not. If you have any specific questions, I am not the person that will be able to answer inspection related questions because I'm not a termite inspector, because I'm not an HVAC inspector, and I have no idea what I'm doing, the electricity. So what I would want you to do at that point, before we even discuss what options to ask the seller to fix, I would like you to talk to each of the inspectors directly. So that way you can hear it from them. And we're not playing the game of telephone. Because the last thing I want to do is be liable and tell you something maybe incorrect that I thought was correct. And you buy a house when you really shouldn't have or you didn't buy a house when you could have. So hear from them as far as what's important and what's not what's actually dangerous and what's not. And we'll take it from there. So that's what I do. You know, as the inspections come in, again, it really depends on the timeline. If you're and how many inspections your buyers get, my buyers usually get at least four to five different inspections, especially if they have a pool in the backyard, and they have kids or whatnot. So I have them go directly to the home inspector because I cannot legally answer anything related to that. Then naturally, the sixth thing on their homework and the way ahead is that if there are major repairs that are needed, then at that point, we're going to regroup, we're going to discuss renegotiations. In the state of Arizona, of course, every state is different, even though houses are sold as is, they're not (laughs) in Arizona. So we do have the option and it's like a pretty much 90% of the time done. So dependent on what state that you're in, you're probably going to have the opportunity to tell your seller or tell the listing agent that XYZ is wrong with the property and the buyer would like XYZ seller to fix XYZ. So that's where I say in this email at at some point in the future, once we get the inspections back, we will discuss renegotiation for major repairs, not because you don't like the color of the wall. And I tell them that from the very beginning as well. I tell them that if you have reached out to me and have gotten my checklist, you will see that I have mentioned that several times before. It's all about client expectations, like setting up those client expectations to show them what's important and what's actually not. I also mentioned in this email that there is another option that even though in in Arizona, we have to give the seller the first opportunity to fit, to physically fix the options, we could also ask them to credit us instead. Or of course, we could also ask them to take money off of the purchase price, but that rarely ends up actually saving the the buyers and the sellers don't you ever really want to do that. So seller concessions is very, very common. Number seven is, of course, this is I'm saying this on top of the lender saying this, do not buy any large items. We're now under contract, do not risk losing this property. If you have any questions, reach out to the lender first about any purchases, any movement of money, like giving or getting, don't risk losing this property. Number eight, If this applies, call the solar company to start transferring the lease over to your name. In Arizona, I cannot do it for them. They don't give me access to anything as a real estate agent. The solar company wants to talk to the sellers directly and the future home owners directly. Number nine, review the buyer packet PDF again and watch the videos that apply. And once again, just like every other video right before this and every other email I have attached at the bottom here, buyer client PDF, which goes over the the video series of home buying start to finish. And the last thing that I have in this email is if you are getting an appraisal, After the inspection period is over, tell your lender lender to order the appraisal. This is a repeat because it's important. So then, of course, I embed the video of my PDF that is applicable to this part of the contract. And then I hit send. So that is my superhuman for buyer email number four. Going back to my checklist now, all of that 
was the first bullet point of my buyer under escrow checklist. As soon as you're under contract, of course, the next bullet point is tell the lender. The lender should already know because you likely have already told them to give you a pre-approval amount for the exact price that you're offering in that offer. So the lender should know, but in case they don't yet, hey, by the way, lender, we're under contract. Can you give the buyers an updated closing amount? That way they know. And this is a great time to get a review. So the third bullet point on my once you're under contract checklist is to ask for a referral. Who else do you know that is looking to buy? Who else do you know whether or not it's in Tucson? I would love to help your friends, your family also have a good experience. So who do you know? So I have some scripts in here um, to help you with that. Scrolling down, the next bullet point is if you're looking to do a quick close or something like less than 30 days, then you're going to want to tell title to do a rushed HOA document. Of course, this already this only applies if your buyer is purchasing in an HOA community in Arizona, they're freaking everywhere. It's super hard to like find a house that's not in an HOA community. So but if they're doing a fast close, you want to make sure hopefully you've already told your buyers that they would likely have to pay for a rushed fee, which costs like about 100 bucks. It can change. Ask your title company. Ask your title company also if they do a military discount, because a lot of them do, obviously, if your buyers are, are military. And if you have negotiated for the sellers to pay for that, then perfect. Either way, make sure title knows that this is a fast close. So can you rush the HOA docs? Last thing you want to do is have everything good to go. You know, the inspections, you just whiz through them if that's even a freaking word you know the appraisal came back super super quick if there even was one and then you forgot to rush the hoa docs and title had no idea because that's a bad spot to be in that could have been avoided because you guys know that i work mainly va loans in the state of arizona the only inspection that is actually required is a pest inspection because termites are everywhere so again just like i have already covered in the email Go over the type of inspections that your buyers want, have your TC schedule them, and make sure that all parties are talking because if the buyers want to be there, you want to make sure that your, tie, that your TC has scheduled it on a time where your buyers can be there, or at least for the last 30 minutes, and your TC can order them as soon as possible. Next up, you're going to make sure that the listing agent has a super lockbox without a CBS code, or if there is a CBS code, you likely would know this already, but make sure that you have the CBS code. Obviously, let them know for all the dates and times that you have the inspections scheduled for. This, in, in my experience with my TC, my TC does that. I don't have to think about that. I will, I will verify, but I really don't have to think about that. Super boxes die. <laughs> they do. So ask the listing agent, do you have a backup, a contractor lockbox? If they do, have them give you the code. They don't have to give you the code, just so you know, they really don't. And if allowed with your state, with your MLS, ask your broker. You can then give the contractor lockbox to the inspectors, whether it's the you know HVAC, roof, plumbing, whatever it is. Again, only if it's allowed in your MLS. That's why I have that here. Then you want to make sure you put on your calendar and your CRM to whatever time frame is the maximum allowed for your buyer to wire the earnest money deposit. You want to make sure that it is done within that time frame. So I have that next. Then when looking at the title commitment, when your title person lets you know and, and emails you the title commitment, you're specifically looking at a couple of things. Who is the seller? Is it the same as who we thought it was? You know, is it who we drafted the offer to? Because if it's sometimes you'll see some misinformation or maybe there's a typo or two parties are on the commitment when really you're only offering to just the, you know, one spouse after divorce or a trust versus non and not the same type of entity. You always want to make sure that that's correct. Are there any payoffs that need to happen that we didn't know about yet? Uh, that could kill a deal. And you want to make sure that if the deal is going to die, you want to kill it now <laughs> and get your buyer out of there, then go through and have your buyer waste their money on inspections. So reach out to your title person in case you don't know exactly what you're looking for in the title commitment. At, after that, you're going to confirm that the lender has ordered the appraisal. Again, likely this is going to be after inspections. Um, and then you're going to 
make sure that you put it on your calendar of when the inspections are for. So that way you can reach out or you can call the inspector and have them give you a debrief if you're not already physically there. Have them give you a debrief of what is important. And again, that's not for then you to relay to the client what is important because that's not for you to say. What import, what's important to the lender, what's important to the seller, what's important to the buyer, what's important to every is, is all different. So you want to make sure even though you'll, you'll have this just for your own frame of reference, but what's important to the buyer needs to be direct communication to the home inspector. And as you go on, this is also following the checklist of the loan status updates that your lender is giving the listing agent. Your lender should be doing this at least, at least every other week. Again, MLSs are different. Our lender does this every single week. So in that way, the listing agent knows hey, we're making progress. We haven't forgotten about this client. We are, you know, every single time this in the LSU or loan status update, there is progress. So that way the listing agent has fewer questions because they know exactly what step everyone is on. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Once you have all of the inspections back, that's when after the buyers have already spoken to the home inspectors directly and know what's important and what's not, that's when you can draft the, the what we call in Arizona, the binzer or buyer inspection notice and seller report of what we're going to ask the seller to fix. Of course, your state's going to call it something different, but likely you have a similar-ish process. So you go over what's important, you ask the seller, you send the form over, and then you wait. And as you send the form over, you want to make sure that this is a phone call. This is not an email. This is not a text, unless for some reason they prefer that. These important, uh, these important conversations, phone calls, phone call, phone call, phone call. Better, it's even better if it's in person, eh, maybe, or it's even better if it's over Zoom or FaceTime. You want to see their faces. You want to see their facial reactions. You want to make sure that you're completely on the same page because after they've gotten all the inspections, if they're a first-time buyer or maybe even if they're a third-time buyer, sometimes they're scared. Sometimes they're like, whoa, this home didn't presented way better than it actually is. Should we back out? And you want to make sure that you you feel that, you see that as opposed to over the phone or over text where you have no idea, they may be one second from pulling out and you don't know, and you could save them money because if they want to pull out, don't have them pay for the appraiser, you know, and and stuff like that. So you want to be on the same page. You want to see as much as you can. So I like doing this over Zoom. And then we send over the home inspection. If the next part of my checklist here is if during escrow, your client messes up the deal or the deal falls through or anything like kind of hiccupy, and you liked working with the cross agent, or if you're still under escrow and it has not yet closed, send them some chocolates, send them some flowers to their office. So that way their teammates see it too. And say, Hey, Allie, I'm so sorry about what happened with, you know, one, two, three Elmo street. I know you have a backup offer and, or you're already under contract. I'm sorry, but thank you so much for working with us. This goes a long way because the agents that actually do business are going to do business with each other again. You do not want to make any enemies. You want to make sure that the next time you have a listing or the next time they have a listing, that you're not going like with your tail between your legs saying, oh, I know I fucked it up last time or my buyers fucked it up last time. And you know, like, but can you accept our offer? Like leave on good terms because real estate is a small business. <laughs> like people will remember you and you have nothing except for your, your reputation. So those are those two points of my checklist. Then how to find signed documents. This, I have some of these checklist bullet points in here, which really my TC does. I can't even tell you where to find the documents. I don't do documents, but you know that about me by now. So I have some stuff here for my downline that for some reason, if they do not use a TC, they can find it on their own. But the point with that was you want to make sure that all of your documents are on time. 
if you have, if you struggle with timeliness, or if you think that you are filling out a form incorrectly, number one, ask your broker and number two, hire a TC because they know how to fill it out correctly. Don't think that you're saving time, money, effort by doing the paperwork yourself. But you already know this by now. I, I, do not know how people don't use TCs. You have to, you have to. <laughs> okay. Ask the buyer when they want to order the appraisal. We've already covered that. If there's going to be post-possession, then use your broker's specific form. EXP has our own post-possession form, which always says, please seek legal counsel because there are a lot of fuck ups that can happen. And I even say that here in case the seller fucks up <laughs> the house before your buyer takes possession. Once the appraisal comes back, if it's at price or even higher, again, this is another opportunity to get a referral, get a testimonial, even better if you get a video testimonial, throw it in the group chat that you have with your lender, uh, whether it's you saying it or your lender saying it, this is a, a, such a good feeling, you know, like when you're when the property comes back even higher, which is what we're doing, we're getting so often here in Tucson at this time, our appraisals are coming in at least $4,000 above what we negotiate. So now is a good time. And with the interest rates coming down, now is a good time for Tucson, Arizona. And so this is a perfect opportunity to ask for referrals. Who else do you know that would want this type of service, even if it's not in Tucson? And would you mind leaving me a quick, just like 20 second testimonial? That would be amazing. You could just text that over to me and just say, you know, how have I helped you so far? Because the more social proof that you can post, the more clients you will get. That's the best way to get clients is social proof. Who else have you helped? Testimonials. So make sure your Instagram shows that or wherever you place your testimonials. If your title company offers any sort of discounts to any specific type of buyers, make sure that your title company knows that they are the type of buyer, you know, firefighters, military, etc. If they're under contract with a home with a pool, make sure you add the specific forms. Again, I have these here and there, but I do rely on my TC. And that's where I'm going to wrap up today's episode. It's going to be a, it's a shorter one, but beefy. I know it's beefy. I know I covered a lot. Again, if you're following along, you can make your own checklist. If you want the checklist that I've already created, hit me up, text the word checklist to 520-341-2552. I'm more than happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with you to go over these checklists. The next episode in the Home Buyer Checklist series is going to be where I go over the week before closing checklist. So stay tuned, reach out to us. Thank you so much for your feedback. I super appreciate it. If you have any questions, drop them in the YouTube comments below. Have a great week, baby. Oh, and be a bro and share this show. And you can start it from here, Rem. Nope, you can't. I was in the wrong section. Shit, my bad. This is how it is behind the scenes, by the way. <laughs> if you hear any snoring, it's not me. <laughs> it's my dog. Ruben is snoring so much and he is distracting me. Ruben. Sorry, buddy. Can we go somewhere else? A few moments later. You snore so loudly. Turn your part up. Say hi to the camera.